Well, good morning. Good morning. I have a question for you this morning. How is your heart this morning? Do you have a heart condition? Are you suffering in some way? Think about that for a moment. Because that's the subject that we're going to talk about this morning. We're going to talk about our heart. Our heart condition. I like to do uh, lessons straight out of the Bible sometimes, and that's what we're going to do this morning. If you'll turn to chapter 13 of the book of Matthew. This is going to be one of the Lord's parables and one of his little lessons that he's given, and we're going to talk about this. You know, when the... The Word of God is planted, is planted in the hearts of men. It is the only thing that is powerful enough to divide us under the soul and the spirit. It pierces even to the heart of man and can convict him and change him in many ways. And that's what he, the Lord's talking about here. It says, and the sower and the seed... The same day when Jesus is out of the house and he sat on the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him. And so he went into his ship and sat. And so they had so many people pressing against him. He had nowhere to go but in the water. So he went out and got on a, a boat. Sitting there just off the shore where they could see him. And he could address the crowd. And... And the whole multitude stood on the shore, and he spake many things unto them in parables. And listen to this one. This is the one we're going to talk about, this parable of the sower. Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he had sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of the earth. And when the sun was raised up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them out. But other fell on, into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who hath the ears, let him hear. This is talking about the Word of God and being shared with many. And I want you to think about this as it pertains to you. What type of soil is your heart? What is your heart condition? Look closely. A sower went out. You heard the Word of God from someone. You may have been raised in the church. You may have heard it from a friend or a relative. Your parents may have taught you. You may have heard it from a friend. At some point, the word was sown in your heart. And it took root. But how did those roots go? Look at verse 4. Let's talk about this. This is talking about a closed heart. This is talking about a closed heart. And when he sowed... Some seeds fell by the wayside. In other words, they weren't there. They were, they, were, they were resistant. There was no ground for them to go into. The Word of God fell on this person's heart, and it did not take root. It just bounced <laughs> off like the seed would if it were thrown on the rocky soil and bounced off of the rocks. There was no soil for it to take root. Eventually, the fowls of the air came by and took it and stole it away. Is that how your heart has been all these years? You've heard the Word of God and oh, you wanted to be a good person and you think of yourself as a good person and you've come to church and you do what you think is right, but the Word hasn't taken root in your heart. You're not really convicted of the truth. The Word's just bounced off of you. You sit in the pew and you hear the truth, you hear the Word of God, but you don't respond. You know it's right. You know it's telling you what you need to do, but you're resisting it. The ground resisted this word, and it bounced off. Is that what has happened to you? You think of yourself as a good person. You think you're going to go to heaven. You think you're a Christian because you come to church, but the word hasn't taken root in your heart. You haven't converted your life to Christianity. You've put on a good show. You cannot fool God. Remember Ananias and Sapphira? 
They purposed in their heart to be a good person, but they lied to God. God knew the truth. Oh, they could fool men. Have you been fooling men, but you've been lying to God? Don't do that. God sees the truth. God knows the truth. And He's told you very clearly exactly what you have to do in order to be saved. He's told you you need to become a child of God. You need to be translated into the kingdom. You must be born into the kingdom. You cannot go to heaven unless you are born again. It's that simple. Why resist it? Why argue? You are arguing against God. Even Job was afraid of that. How can we pose an argument against God? And when? The devil has tried. And he has lost. And he knows he has lost. The devil tried. He couldn't win. What makes you think you can win an argument with God? But I'm a good person. I do good things. <clears throat> I believe in you. I just don't want to be baptized. I have seen men resist. I have seen men who disobeyed. They knew what they needed to do. And they lived their life and it was a good life. They were good people. They came to church. They sat right alongside this one particular man I'm thinking of, sat beside his wife. Year after year after year. He never obeyed. And he died without having obeyed. <clears throat> Nothing I can do to help that man. Nothing his wife can do to help that man. We know the consequences. We know the results because of what God says. The man knew too. He just His excuse was he was afraid of water. <laughs> he was afraid of water. There's a lady right down here, not too far from here, in Temple, Oklahoma. I taught her. She knew the truth. She was afraid of water, and she's dead. She has died without being baptized. There's no clause in God's covenant for that. He says, you must be baptized. No man can enter the kingdom of heaven without having been born of water. You can't. We can't argue that. That's God's rules. Don't resist God. Don't resist the truth. Don't let the seed, the Word of God, fall on your heart and bounce off. Don't let the world steal the truth from you. And that's what's happened here in verse 4. The Word of God fell and it went away. It didn't take root. Now look at verses 5 and 6. It says, Some fell upon the stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of the earth. And when the sun was dried, was up, they were scorched because they had no root, they were withered away. There are some who have obeyed the gospel. Oh, they know. They listen to it, and they have obeyed. But then they didn't study the Word of God. They didn't grow in wisdom and knowledge concerning the Word of God. Just like we're told in the Hebrews, we ought to be teachers going out and teaching. But we have to start over again. Start with the first principles. Don't be doing that. We are to do like Peter said. We're to desire the sincere milk of the Word that we may grow thereby. But we need to work towards what? The meat of the Word. We need to grow in Christ. If you don't cultivate that soil, if you don't get rid of those stones in that soil, the roots are not going to be very deep. They can't get the nutrients they need from the ground to resist the heat of the sun, and those roots run and stay dried up. So will the Word of God with you. The world will steal the truth from you. You will lose in the end if you don't study the Word of God. It's that simple. 
You need to nurture yourself as a newborn babe on the Word of God. You need to study the Word of God. You need to feed your spirit man. You need to study the Word, study the Word, to be able to give an answer to everyone who would ask you the truth. You need to study 2 Timothy 2.15 to show yourself approved unto God. It means God can look down upon you and say, well done. If you don't grow in wisdom and knowledge, you don't grow in the Word, God cannot say, well done. Because you're not doing what He's told you to do. God works through you. If you're not studying the Word and you're not growing in Christ, God can't work through you. And what happens? Eventually, the world wins. And you dry up. And you no longer are the workman you began to be. Oh, you may have started out with a, a fervor for doing what God wanted you to do. I want to do this. I want to do that. But eventually with time, you quit doing that. And eventually, well, I don't need to go to church today. I, I want to go do so and so. Eventually, church doesn't matter. The Bible doesn't matter to you because you don't study that. So why would church make any difference to you? Eventually, you find excuses to not go to church. Eventually, my friends, if you don't help the Word take root in your heart and let it become the engrafted Word of God, you will wither up and dry up and fly away in the winds of the world. Don't let that happen to you. Look at verse 7. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them out. Beloved, the, the Word of God takes root in your heart. You become a child of God. There's one thing you must do without question. <clears throat> you must remove yourself from the conditions the world has put you in. Because if you remain in those same conditions, the world can easily choke you out again. And sometimes this has to do with relatives. Sometimes it has to do with friends. Friends who have powerful influence over you and persuade you to do wrong. Remove yourself from them. If it means moving them out or you out, either way, remove yourself from that worldly influence, whatever it is. If it's the internet, if it's TV, if it's your phone, if it's your friends, if it's your relatives, whatever it might be that is influencing you to do wrong, remove it. The Bible talks about shunning the very appearance of evil. If it has any type of hint of worldlyism in it, don't go near it. Paul was concerned about things like this. He said he had to buffet his body daily, bringing it into subjection to the will of God. He talks about taking every thought and every imagination and bringing it into captivity. He was worried about becoming a castaway once he had taught the truth to others. If he is concerned and understands the influence of the world, you ought to be as well. That's the thorns, my friend. The thorns and the the things that are evil in this world, they spring up around you. They take root and they, they rob you of the nutrients you need. They take your time, for instance. They take time away. Time you could be spending with God. Time you could be spending doing God's work. They take it away from you and eventually you don't see the need for the Lord anymore. You don't see the need for the Bible. Oh, I'm, I'm doing just fine. I've got my friends. Beloved, your friends of the world will not get you into heaven. They will take you down the fast track straight to hell is where they will take you. And Matthew is called the broad way. Don't put yourself in that position. Don't let the world choke you out. Look at verse 8. But the other fell on into good ground and brought forth fruit, 
some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. <coughs> Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. The good ground. What is the good ground? Well, ground, the good ground is ground that's been prepared. Usually, it is going to be a ground that's been taken care of. As parents raising up children, we watch what they do. We watch what they see on TV. We cultivate their heart for good to receive the Word of God because we demonstrate it to them. We teach it to them. We sing of God to them. We model ourselves for them so they can see what it is to be a child of God. They are fertile soil. They are good soil. And we help the Word of God take root in their heart. They already have a jump start on the Word. And they have a jump start on being a child of God because they have had such good teachers. Think about Timothy and his grandmother and his mother who cultivated his heart and made him receptive to the truth when Paul taught him in Lystra. Think about that. We are to cultivate the ground of our children's hearts. We are to help pull those, root, those thorns out, those weeds Things that try to sprout in their heart. That's our job as parents to take them out. Remove those things from their life that would have a negative influence on them and lead them away from God. The same thing happens, my friends, with older people. Older in the sense that I'm speaking of versus children, older adults, young men, young ladies that have good soul. They have an honest heart. They've been taught right as far as morality is concerned, and they're good people, and they learn about the Word of God. But it's our job as children of God to nurture them, to cultivate their heart, to prepare them to receive the Word of God. And once they become children of God, we help them. We help to remove those tears and those thorns when they grow in their heart. We keep them separated from the world and unto God by being their friend, by inviting them into our home, sharing our home with them, sharing our love of God with them, making them feel welcome and having a place to belong that is different from the world. And notice what it says. They took root in that heart. And then they brought forth what? Fruit. What does the Lord say? Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. What else does He say? I am the vine, you are the branches. It's our job as the branch to bear the fruit. The vine, the heart of the vine doesn't bear the fruit. It provides the nutrients to the limb, to the branch. And then we provide the fruit. Where do, God always provides the increase, the who does the work? Who bears the load? We do. We bear the burden of going out into the world and finding those lost souls. We are the branch that bears the fruit. The fruit, my friend, is the souls of the lost who have been converted from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of uh, the Lord's dear Son. That's our job. And we can only do that when we are strong in our heart, have studied the Word of God, and prepared ourselves to teach the Gospel. Because we have to do what? We have to help them remove the tares and the thorns that the root of the Word may take root in their heart and become the engrafted Word of God for them just as it has for us. Fruit does not get born by itself. It needs a branch. It needs a vine. It needs a leaf. It needs the flower. It needs the bees to come along and pollinate. It all Think of all the things that's involved in bearing fruit. And that involves you being obedient to God to begin with, studying the Word of God, cultivating the hearts of men, planting the seed, going back and watering it, and then once it has sprouted and taken root and taken the form of what it needs to be, we go back and we water it, we protect it, we pull the tares from around it so it doesn't get robbed of its nutrients, we nurture it until it has become full-grown and can bear fruit as well. 
This, my friends, is our heart condition. Where is your heart today? Has it been unreceptive? Denying the very truth of the Word of God? Has it been in a shallow heart, like on the stony ground? It didn't take root very long, and now it's bounced off and it's gone away. Are you too busy in life? Are you too busy? When you, t- you allowed it to take root, but then the world came in and crowded it out. It got too hot and you got burned up because you didn't focus on your new life. Or are you receptive to the Word of God? Have you obeyed it? Think about that. What is your heart condition today? I hope it's one that is healthy. I hope it is one that is working for the Lord. I hope it is one that allows the Word to grow and develop in you and that you are strong and that you can save souls. I'm teaching uh, teaching the Bible study method to the church not too far from here. And when I was introducing to them to the study and what they would be doing, I asked them to raise your hands. And this is the whole congregation. I asked them, raise your hands and tell me, those of you that are here, if you had an opportunity to teach someone the gospel, could you do it? And now of that whole congregation of about 100 people, only seven people raised their hands. That's one of the reasons the church isn't growing. Because we're not prepared enough to help others obey the gospel. Don't let that be you. Let the word of God do exactly what we're told in the scripture. Let it dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Helping perfect you into the image of Christ as we're supposed to but also helping you to save your soul and the souls of others. If you're here this morning, you need to put your Lord on in baptism. Now is a perfect opportunity. If you are a child of God, but you stumble, you fall, and you need help, we're here for you. We love you. God most certainly does. Whatever we can do for you in Christ, won't you come? All together, we stand and invite you in song.